welcome back to the vlog, a new vlog this week. I am looking way more glam than usual. Red lipstick, who does she think she is? In a past life, a pre-pandemic, a pre most of my days were spent in bed life, I um, loved a red lip. So I thought I'd whip one out tonight. This is number 244 from that brand that I talked about the other week that I really like. I think it's really cute. Um, Tom and I are off to a book event tonight, a real life book event, which feels like such a privilege. Um, oh my God, I've just thought about the fact that I'm wearing lipstick and I'm gonna wear a mask all night indoors. I think I'll wear a medical mask tonight so I don't ruin my nice fabric ones. Um, it's actually with Olivia Sujek, who if you saw me um, rave about Asylum Road, oh, I have it on my eyebrows, earlier this year, then you would have known that I loved it a lot. Um, She's talking about the nature of storytelling and she's in conversation with three other authors, none of which I know, but it was £10 and it's at, um, it's the thing called Brighton Festival, which is like a month long literature and arts festival we have every year here. Um, I've been to a couple of events with them in the past. Last year they went digital and this year they're doing a couple of small events online, like across the city. Um, normally it's like in these big tents and stuff, but that's not happening at the moment. And it's actually weirdly being held like in the concert hall of like one of the schools. Um, and the school is literally at the top of our road, like 15 minutes walk. So gonna go in my wheelchair with Tom and yeah we just booked the tickets earlier today because I saw them on Olivia's Instagram and I was like you know what I feel good today let me do something I've cancelled and lost so many tickets from being ill so I was just like this is the time so I'm just admiring how well my um dripping is going on this like orange into yellow we love that anyway thought to show you what I'm wearing it is so sunny in the UK at the moment, which is an absolute blessing. Got a nice little midi skirt on from Warehouse that I got for my birthday. This is an older cardigan and then a little vest underneath. And my earrings, these are some of my favorite earrings in the world and they're going like um, tarnish there. I got them at car boot sale, but they are so cool. Anyway. That's what I'm doing tonight. I thought I'd tell you what I'm reading. Like I said, it's the long weekend coming up. Um, me and Tom have loads of lovely date plans, which is so nice. Like, obviously got to do some really nice stuff last weekend, had friends come to visit, but we haven't had a weekend to ourselves where I felt well enough to like have spontaneous plans. Um, so honestly, I'm just feeling really grateful for life at the moment. Um, I had a really hard week, to be honest. Um, hospital really knocked it out of me but I guess the treatment I was given has clearly done something because I feel good today um anyway I'm almost finished reading Molly McCullen's Brown's essay collection The Places I Take My Body I was so kindly sent this by Faber and I'm absolutely loving it I started this in disability readathon month but honestly found it really heavy um at the time so I ended up putting it down but I wanted to finish it and I'm absolutely adoring it I did try and read it in hospital the other day but I found that really like a lot so but i wanted to read so many of the bits it's so relatable so molly has cerebral palsy but if you live with any kind of chronic pain degenerative illness or any kind of conversation about being young and disabled she's a wheelchair user um but she's not paralyzed so she does talk a bit about like um the lines between walking and using a wheelchair and sort of like the spaces the looks you get if you stand up in your wheelchair like all that kind of stuff that I've been talking to you guys about recently, but I wanted to read a couple of things that I love. So it literally opens on the first page where she says, my life is built to flex unconsciously around new pain. I haven't been to see a doctor because the change has been fast, has so far been manageable. Because another dose of ibuprofen, a little less energy and a slightly stronger ache to cope with isn't going to hurt me. I haven't been to see a doctor because I'm finishing graduate school and I'm caught in the bureaucracy of of going no permanent address shifting health insurance too much influx way too much to do and this whole this essay is all about like healthcare obviously she or well not obviously but she's american so she's talking a lot about the u.s um american healthcare system but it's just absolutely um beautiful she also talks a lot about organized religion and her coming to find catholicism later in life like as a young adult and growing up with parents of academics but in the bible belt and she talks specifically about liberty university liberty college which is like a university um um in near where she lives in virginia i want to say and it's all about like um christian fundamentalism evangelicalism and she um references a lot of those experiences and i found those chapters really really interesting as well um 
and she talks a lot about like coming to terms with illness she's been ill she has had cerebral palsy so she obviously was ill from being a child and sort of like the amount of surgery and medical trauma she's been through but she said I've laughed at the fanatics who would occasionally come up to me on the street and offer to lay their hands and heal my maladies it's utterly ridiculous and a little more than offensive but I won't pretend that being healed isn't a dream I've had since childhood I thought that was beautiful and it's so deeply honest and understanding so she is in present time in the book on a fellowship across Europe um, uh, a writing fellowship for her poetry and she talks about the inaccessibility of Europe and the foreign countries that she visits the churches the museums the access to these places that are not prepared to accommodate for wheelchair users and how that makes her feel like she's wasting this opportunity um, but this so much, so much of this spoke to me. So in the essay, The Skin You're In, she says, that night I don't really sleep. My hips and knees ache so intensely I can almost hear it. I lie still on the mattress because any motion produces a spasm. Maybe you can only ask your body to lie to itself for so long. And she talks a lot about this toing and froing and coming to terms and like bartering with your body and wanting to make sure that it will um, be, where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be and like trying to convince it that like please can you just hang on for another two days can you hang on for this and I feel like I'm constantly in that relationship with my own body of trying to make sure that it's um that it's part I want to participate in life but I also want to be kind to myself and where do you draw those lines so she says in the essay cooling long distance my body needs to rest but it's more than that I'm exhausted by feigning comfort and I don't want to translate what's going on inside of me even to my friends they're sorry when I'm hurting, but for them, the act of rising from the couch and standing is effortless and instant. The only thing explaining my body will do is widen the gulf between us. I think that's really pertinent when we consider friendships between sick and non-sick people a lot, like your able-bodied friends if you're disabled, and I feel like that a lot about the gulf will just continue to widen and you don't know what to do. You want to be honest, but you also feel like a burden and like you're always being a downer people ask you how are you still and you say well I'm still in pain because I'm always in pain um I think that's really interesting it's definitely inspiring a lot of writing that I'm doing at the moment so yeah can't recommend this enough we'll wrap it up in my video wow I've talked for seven minutes um I will get on with my evening maybe film a little clip of the event we go to later and I will see you at the weekend for more fun stuff getting a sweet ride guys Bang. No, we're just eating crisps. Some really good gluten free, amazing organic tortilla chip rolls. They're really good. Why do I roll them up there? Do you not like it? I do, but obviously, when they're not rolled up, there's more area for a dip. Mm. I think they're a thing in America. Tell us. Yeah. Do you have this shape crisp in America? Or anywhere else for that matter. Yeah, sorry, how dare I do so? American centric. No, um, they do weird things with food over there though, don't they? Don't CJ will get upset. Anyway, we're here to talk to you about the event we went to. It was absolutely glorious. It was so it was maybe twenty people there, like it was so it felt really safe um we were like really spread out weren't we we were <laughs> um but it was just glorious wasn't it to be in the company of other book lovers and to see people talk in person and each of the authors i'm sorry i actually don't remember the names Ramesh, i can't remember his surname but he wrote a book called Reef, which has been on my TBR for years. Um, he's a Sri Lankan British writer. Oh no, I just got so much that <laughs> sat on my skirt and Tom's mad at me. Oh my god, our neighbours always have guests. Not that that's illegal now, but they were doing it when it was Ill un illegal. Unillegal? When it was illegal. Um, 
What's your favourite bit of the talk? Uh, Ramesh's reading was very good. Oh, it was beautiful. He had such character. And he stood up to read. And I love that. His book was about 1960s Sri Lanka and like a brief friendship between two young boys and the protagonist was a young boy. I mean, I'm definitely going to order it. Um, they spoke a lot about like the notion of autofiction, of writing realist fiction based on places that you've been, how all of your characters are developed out of people you know, but none of them are really anything until you let them be themselves, which was really interesting. What else do you think? Um, there was a lot of talk of memory, mm. which is very interesting. Um, and you don't know about this idea that the past is never really settled, but it's sort of continually being uh, events that happened are continually being reappraised and re dredged into the present. Mm, so, George spoke about so his book is um, like a telling and um piece of autofiction based on his mother's life in uh hungary hungary and her experience um in a concentration camp and then eventually her um coming to britain release and moved to britain and she was a photographer i think the book's called photographer at 16 or something yeah something like that i'll link all the books we're talking about down below but he was talking about how after his mother passed away he interviewed his father for the inspiration for the book and how that he kept these tapes, he wrote the book, I'm guessing a while ago, or he did the tapes before he wrote the book. Yeah. And um, he would sit down with his dad every week and record something about the history, their shared history, or the history that he shared with, with um, his mother. And he could see in real time um, his father adapting and moulding the story to something that was tidier, something that would fit the narrative that George wanted, and sort of like piecing together a history that would be suitable for George's purpose as if to to want to please George and I thought that was really interesting well yeah and I think it just shows that there there's not sort of an objective event that happens rather there there's only sort of partial accounts of it all of which are slightly imperfect mm. and also what is the need to seek an objective and perfect truth of things. Um, yeah. They spoke about at the end, like, a person asked, like, what does it mean to try and find a family history of a place that no longer exists? Um, talking about Olivia's experience with Yugoslavia and Bosnia and Serbia, and um, the place that Romesh grew up is, was, is no longer what it, what, like, what it was now. And George said back to the person, like, but what are, what, what is it that you are looking for and why do you need to... I can't remember the line that he said. It's really good. Mm. And sort of like posing on the question back to her, like why is it that you need to seek this physical place? Um, which I really liked. And then they spoke about at the end about Mother Tongue and Ramesh made some brilliant conversation about that. He said what it means to have a mother tongue and he said he doesn't really agree with the notion at all of mother tongue. There's only first language and the language that you think in and the language that you're comfortable in but is there really a language that you were born into and particularly with his experience with Sri Lanka where English um, growing up for him was seen as like this imperial language that was imposed on them and so to choose to write in English was considered a faux pas necessarily and how that alienates you from your own audience which I really thought that was it's so interesting. Yeah, because I think to do that is to operate on a view of the world is very sort of um, packaged very neatly along those state lines and to view those places is very sedentary. What, in that this, mother tongue? Well, yeah, but that um, this language belongs to this place New as people. opposed to them being... You know, much more dynamic. Because mm, then he went on to talk about how he thinks there is no ownership over the English language because it's so widely spoken that any person or group of people that adopt English as, <coughs> as a community language and change it, and then we have these dialects and reimaginings and regional accents and all these things, that it's actually such a averse. <coughs> Excuse me. 
It's such a versatile language that can no longer be claimed as imperialist or as um, one, which I mean, as a education student, I would disagree with because we very much still teach children to speak and think in the Queen's English and standard English, but I can understand from his writing perspective. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I feel like there are some flaws with that argument because there are, I think because language is so, so tied to place and there are very specific phenomena that occur in very specific contexts that can't be described adequately through the English language. Mm. Um, but I think in his context of fictional writing, he wasn't necessarily viewing it as a politics issue. Um, but yeah, it was brilliant. It was just so good to be in real life, so good to hear writers. Gonna so order two of those not books. to be on Zoom or yeah. Teams or whatever hell trap you got to use. So now I'm gonna eat these crisps and go to bed. Good morning, folks. I'm wearing a jumpsuit today, the one I was gonna get rid of in my wardrobe video. So looking very tanned. I used the new Beauty Pie Fake Tan and I love it. I'm talking really quietly because Tom's moderating a university event with a professor that he really likes, so I'm being a good quiet roommate. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm obsessed with this new Beauty Pie Tan. It literally took me 10 minutes last night. Did it really quickly. And then it's set overnight and I think it looks so good. I don't know if the lighting's that good, but I think it looks really natural. Anyway, I've got about 10 pages left of Molly McCullum Brown's um, books. I'm gonna finish that this morning and then I thought I'd show you a little bit of book posts I got and a food haul, because you guys love the food hauls. Um, so these two books I bought for myself off of um, bookshop.org. I really am on a buying ban. Although I did order last night, Tom and I ordered the books from the event we went to, but I got them second hand, so I feel like that's okay. And then these are two that are just like, I bought at 5 a.m. last week. The first one is Lolly Editions, published The Employees, a workplace novel of the 22nd century. Jaden loved this, CJ loved this. I knew I was gonna love it. I think it's gonna be a really interesting investigation into late capitalism, workism, these ideas. It's um like near future dystopia sci-fi which is not my thing as you know but I'm sometimes I'm just in the mood for like weird stuff and I feel like I might read this over the weekend we shall see and then another one that's like I paid too much money for this on Catapult I would not have bought it at normal times um I don't think it's published in the UK yet because it's published by Catapult and it's my heart a novel by I'm not even gonna tell you how to say that I'm so sorry but it's translated from the Bosnian which is very um, relevant to what I was listening to last night. Whoa, the pages are so wide. Weird. So it's an, a memoir piece of autobiographical fiction by a former Yugoslavia's greatest writer. His family experiences as refugees from the Bosnian War, a timeless tale of love, memory, and the resilience of the human spirit. So yes, yeah, exploring love, and it's a look at the Bosnian War, which led them to flee to America, and the e eerie. Times of Donald Trump's presidency, the nature of memory and grief, poetically explosive. We know I love poetic explosions. Um, I'm so excited that I'm kind of annoyed though because it turned up kind of dirty and it was 20 pounds, which is so expensive. I never pay that much for hardbacks, but yeah, translated from the Bosnian, excited. Then another book um, I got sent from the lovely Lucy at Canongate, who's literally so kind. Um, she asked me if I wanted anything else from the catalogue after loving um, Small Bodies of Water and Startup Wife, which two of Pat, uh, Canongate's pup, uh, summer releases. So this is The Cower by Jared McGuinness. It's sort of like, when I look at the cover, it's like not really my type of thing, but um, when I was looking through the catalogue, the author's bio made me laugh so much. So he's a wheelchair user and the story is based on someone who uses a wheelchair. And in his author bio, he said like, I've got a PhD, I do this, I do this, I teach, but mostly I inspire the general public by taking my daughter to the park in my wheelchair. And I just thought that was really funny. It really made me laugh and want to read more about wheelchair use. So this says, what's worse than being in a wheelchair, being a fuck up in a wheelchair. So it's all about um, Jared has a um, car crash and discovers that he'll never walk again, referring to his wheelchair as a giant roller skate. He finds himself with no money or job and refers has to return back to his father's house who he hasn't seen in 10 years. 
He has a shoplifting habit and a painkiller addiction and the fact total strangers treat him like an idiot. This is a recipe for self-destruction. So I feel like this may be like a male Moshbeckian vibe, um, it sounds like, but I'm interested in the own voice's portrayal of wheelchair use, particularly like overnight, um, you know, like using a wheelchair in a, um, after an accident. So yeah, that's really cool. And then what did I get from Vegan Kind? Some of the usual stuff, which you've seen me haul loads of times now. The buttercups, the love for all ones, the cookie dough is my favourite. Got peanut brownie this time, I don't know why. Um, salted caramel bar, also from them. And the peanut butter bar, which I love. Just love love for all. Sponsor me, love for all. Um, oh, I got the white chocolate version of the Kinder Bueno. So excited to try that. Like I'm saving it for when it's gonna be like, I need it. I also need to get my diet back on track and this is not the best amount of sugar. Um, these are so good. I had them at my mom's house last week so I had to order them. Buttermilk, treat yourself, dairy, free salted caramel cups. They're like, I remember we had them once at Christmas here as well. Oh, the packaging's compostable, gluten free. That's really cool. I mean, they're not one ingredient, no sugar and glucose. Sick. But yeah, I think that'll be really good. Mm, love salt of caramel. These are my superior gluten-free cookie of choice. Might crave them for 30 seconds, maybe not in 30. The um, Rhythm 108 hazelnut chocolate praline. Praline? Praline? Pauline. Who knows? Two of those. Delicious. Um, this is my other cookie brand, which these are a lot healthier. I got vanilla chocolate chip is my basic from Cookie Cat. And then I really like the salty caramel almond that I tried last time. Like that. And then most excitingly, this was why I did the whole order. The Burger Co, which is like a Brighton and London based vegan burger brand. Um, I ate it a lot when I worked in East London because you could deliver it really close. Um, they've started to release like sauces you can buy. And this is the spicy, cheesy vegan sauce, but it doesn't have soy in it. As I've said millions of times, I'm not allowed to eat soy and it's really hard to find vegan choice without soy. Um, it's made from sweet potato, nutritional yeast, olive oil, corn flour, mustard. Yeah, it's got really good ingredients, so I'm really excited to try this and just heat it in a saucepan and put it on nachos. Oh, baby. I will review that for you. Anyway, I've got 300 words to reach my writing target for today for an essay and then Tom and I are going out on a date tonight, so I'll probably catch up with you then. Good morning folks, I didn't film any more talking clips yesterday but you would have seen me and Tom went out for the most gorgeous dinner. It's one of our favourite vegan restaurants in town, it's called Botanique, I will link them down below and I can't express to you how nice the staff are, like they are the nicest, the manager there, all the people who work there, like we were chatting to them about the owner and how well they were provided for um, in the times that they were closed and the food is just out of this world. It's so hard I think to find vegan food that's like healthy, um, and like bougie, I guess. Like mostly it's um, like junk food vegan, is, which I, you know, I love, but my stomach does not love. And everything we had last night was like gluten free. And oh my God, it was so delicious. These like saffron arancini balls and this um, like spring onion fritter. Oh, delicious. Um, anyway, I'm up again today on a Saturday. I'm, um, me and Tom are going into town for just like an hour. So go to three shops just because I really want to browse for a new summer dress. Um, so I'm just getting ready. I need to refill all my supplements. I can't bother this. I just did today. But I also wanted to update you guys because I'm still loving the font uh, tinctures that I got sent. Um, this isn't Spawn or anything. They just sent them to me to try. Um, but my two 
absolute favourites are Refresh and Revitalise, which is the raspberry green tea one with vitamin B in it, which I am loving for like my after lunch drink. Like I drink it with my supplement when I take my like oral supplements and I feel like it really does give me a boost, which is probably the green tea that's in it. Um, and it's got a lot of vitamin C, which I guys mentioned in my first ever resident sicko video, how much I rely on high dose vitamin C for um, energy. I'm gonna try it on in an IV soon, but for now I'm liking the oral supplements and this one. And then the cleanse and detox, which is um, ginger, lemon and dandelion, which I'm finding so good for nausea. I drank it last night after I came back because obviously eating a lot of rich food like doesn't always taste feel so good on my tummy afterwards so I've been loving that and I'm still loving my love hemp CBD stuff um so I'll just fill you in on that and I'll show you what I'm wearing out to town and then I'll talk to you about books later I started a new audiobook at 5 a.m this morning so it's actually still quite oh my god look at all my supplements it's still quite sunny um in the UK but it's not like super warm this morning so I got my little scorpion socks on this M&S dress which so many people commented that was good that they loved and then this is a really old Zara jumper and my earrings are from this really cool boutique um I think they're made in India my mum got them for me for my birthday but I will link them down below and still loving my beauty pie fake tan so yeah I'll show you around town I might get a bit of lunch depending on how long I can stay I have to go on my feet because Brighton lanes are notoriously inaccessible for wheelchairs so let's see how these bad boys want to play today back from town as you can see wow my mascara's all over the place um i'm actually knackered i'm just resting but we did buy some nice things one of which i got this sick new ring at the saturday market can you see if you are ever in brighton it's on tidy street um it was a tenner it's silver it's like a stool that's like you they weigh by silver basically and you just go you have to like scavenge i got this really cool scalloped one it's also a tenner um genuine 925 silver bargain um and i also treated myself and tom bought me something so maybe i'll show you that oh my god so high tech tom got these new shorts show the people hello can you see them come closer they're like cool these cool vintage shorts and they have this nice label that says ucla surf team baby from my time at ucla <laughs> surf team um, we got them at Wolf and Gypsy, which is one, it was probably my favourite vintage store in Brighton, where I also bought this beautiful coat, which I do not need, well I kind of do, it's like my spring jacket and my friend Ellie actually has one that's really similar, but this You're one's You're inspired vintage. by Ellie Wilkes. Don't say her surname on the internet, oh, no. she might not like her. <laughs> um, this is what it looks like. It's like a cool black worn puffer vibe it's really cute and the girl in wolf and, in wolf and gypsy is so nice so i got that these new rings and then tom so kindly bought me a present from lucy and yak which is something i've actually wanted this for ages um and i didn't think they were going to have it in my size so i thought it was last season but it's this boiler suit it's like long sleeve and it's like this caravan floral sort of like very 70s print i'll try it on for you but i'm probably not gonna wear it this weekend because it's gonna be really hot 
but yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. So yeah, that's what we got in town. Had a really nice mezze lunch, and now I'm gonna settle down to some reading. I've started a new audiobook, so I'm gonna put my comfies on and I'll tell you about it. Tom actually did more shopping than me, classic. No, not true. True. He actually got this sick, like, railway jacket from Starfish, which is like our second favourite vintage yeah, store, I'd yeah. say. And the lady complimented my trousers. She did, and he obviously gets up to Nigo booth when anyone compliments his clothes. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice, I can't wait to do that. It's like Dent, come up a bit closer. Hello. <laughs> it's like a denim with a cord collar and contrast stitching, and it's got a really nice um, liner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chic. What else did you buy? Oh, then just a black. Yeah, and black t-shirt. A black Carhartt vintage t-shirt. That's our clothes haul. Call us influencers, baby. Influencers. Um. <laughs> so yeah, we had a nice time. We haven't been shopping or in town in so long, so it's nice to act like normal human being. I'm doing a tiny little bookstagram shoot with these beautiful flowers Tom bought me today, and then... Um, this new plate that one of my gorgeous friends got me for my birthday. It's from Soms Clay, which is like one of the coolest pottery brands ever. I will link them down below. I'm desperate for one of her mugs. But yeah, I'm shooting this new book, Sevastopol, which you would have saw me haul. It was kindly sent to me from Lolly Editions. Um, so I'm just shooting it along with a book that I've already read and I'll think about what else, but I'm quite tired, so. No, well, I'm actually extremely for tired, so I'll probably only do a couple. I pulled myself out of bed. Blah? That doesn't make sense. I pulled myself out of bed. It's such a beautiful evening here. You can see. There's some. But it's lovely. I thought I would just check in and tell you what books I'm reading. I'm like, it's the end of the month, so I've decided obviously to start like four books at once because that seems very sensible. Um, oh, can you see me? Yeah. So I'm reading What It Feels Like for a Girl by Paris Lee. So I put this in my books on my radar. Paris Lee is a wonderful journalist, commentator, um, all around good egg writer um, and a trans woman in here in the UK and she's penned this I think it's like memoir slash autofiction I really haven't like worked it out yeah I think it's so it's basically based on her growing up um her experiences with a lot so far it's she grew up in Nottinghamshire like um the rural midlands and it's about whoa can you see that sunbeam biblical um it's about her experiences when she was young and how much she suffered um under her dad with um that homophobic re homophobic rhetoric and uh, bullying and feeling like she wanted to escape and leave the city and then it's her coming of age as she moves to nottingham which is a bigger city in the midlands and discovers drag and discovers her sexuality and her queerness and it's um written in a midlands dialect so far so if you've read train spotting or clockwork orange they're probably like the most famous british or like uk books written in a dialect i would say um so it's similar to that although slightly easier to understand if you're not from the uk i would say than reading in scottish dialect so i'm reading that at the moment i'm really enjoying it. i think it came out today actually um but when my brain is not switching on for that i'm reading i'm listening to it on script it's called a record the wreckage of my presence by casey wilson so i don't really know casey wilson that well i googled her earlier so she's a actor um she's most famous for being on saturday night live um which i've like watched clips of on youtube but that it's not really a big thing in the uk but these essays are really funny they're reminding me of um Tonight, I feel like someone else, I'm going to say. Is that what it's called? I'm looking at my bookshelf. Chelsea Hodgson, which I didn't love. It was, like, very American-centric. I didn't get a lot of the comments. Um, Miranda July's book, which I also didn't love. I actually prefer this. And um, So Sad Today by Melissa Broder. It's got these, like, very sarcastic, depressed woman in the city sort of situation. But she's talking a lot about her grief, losing her mother, 
Um, it's really funny. It's got that like um, sarcastic tone that Samantha Irby's essays um, have. And it's just like a really nice chill background book. So far we've heard about her childhood dog, losing her mum, getting into acting, writing her first screenplay. Um, she's name dropping a few people who I have absolutely no idea who they are. But besides that, it's really good. So that's my audio pick. And then I'm reading an essay collection. This is Pop Song by Larissa Pham. You would have seen me haul this recently, I want to say. It's out from Serpent's Tale in July, but I really fancied a essay collection um, to pick up. So I've only read the first two essays so far. And the first one was on her experience with, with running. And she's addressing, I think, her partner in it and he, their current obsession with running and how she grew to love running at university and sort of what it did for her um she references the murakami book on running which is like wh i read that before i got sick and um loved it i don't think it was before i got sick i read it when i still thought i could run maybe um and he she references that in here a lot and it's um really easy going but mostly about her university life so far and her experiences with um coming of age stories sort of that vibe so far but i really like it that's what i'm reading tom's going out to the pub what are you reading tom um i just started the young team by graham armstrong i think that's his name yeah i think it is um just speaking of dialects actually that's also written in a glaswegian dialect um so i don't know i guess it just takes a few pages to get into the rhythm of it but then I don't know yeah I find it very like a really um very evocative sort of writing yeah I feel the same about this one and um, Paris Lee's book am I opening a white chocolate vegan kinder bueno yes I am sir um that is absorbing but you sometimes like when you're picking it up and putting it down it takes a while to get back into the rhythm yeah but is that about toxic masculinity uh, in, so it's sort of, it's based on the author's own experience growing up in, uh, like, a, or like on an estate in Glasgow, um, and the sort of, yeah, the violent gang culture that existed there between, uh, yeah, different areas. Mm. Um, I'm only like a few chapters into it so far, but yeah, I think it will partly be about that, um... And also, I think, which was one of the main things with Shuggy Bane, sort of, what happens when, I don't know, a city is essentially just left to rot. Mm. Um, and I was actually reading the other day, there's this thing called, I, this health person called it, like, the Glasgow effect or something like that. But in, like, so you'd think Glasgow would be similar in terms of life expectancy. No, it's got the lowest one in the UK, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew so that. You'd, you'd think it would be similar to other post-industrial cities, like Liverpool, and Manchester. But, like, people in Glasgow, like, die on average, like, 10 years younger. And, like, people don't know why. Well, and there was this amazing thing written about it, and it, it was just sort of like... It, there just seems to be something in the the place of Glasgow. Well, I read because they, they piloted that scheme of, like, upping the minimum price of alcohol in the Scottish Government yes. a while ago. I read, when I was reading about this, was years ago, I thought they, um, the Glaswegian effect was due to alcoholism. I think a lot of it's part of that. Um, Which, obviously, is off the back of, like, low prospects and socioeconomic insecurity and stuff. Well, yeah, and if you think about it as well, like, when you rip the industry out of a city like that and the people there are used to, especially, like, Glasgow is all sort of, like, ship work, mm -hmm. especially when you're used to, like, heavy industry. Manual labour. Obviously, like, your bo like, the toll it takes on your body is just insane. So oh, yeah. You then use medication for mm. that and then... And I think a lot of it as well, which is sort of the central thing of Shuggy Bane, is a lot of it's sort of about slum clearance and what mm. happens when you take communities out of the city, like out of the city centre and, um, just and move them out. And then when you take the industry away from that, like you just essentially leave it with nothing. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll be bothering that. Anyway, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Okay, the most important update is this white chocolate Kinder Bueno was out of this world.
10 out of 10. Buy it. Order it. Do it. Bye. A dress what a treat this um like rose maxi dress i think i put in a vlog i got it at the car boot sale a couple of weeks ago and this jumper that i'm wearing so much at the moment um is under the stories tom and i are off to lidl a new lidl just opened down the road and we're very excited about it i have not been inside a supermarket in months that's a lie i think i've been seeing it a couple of times i've probably told you about it on the vlog but i haven't been inside lidl audi in ages because the queues are normally so long so we're going there to pick up some bits, um, honestly just for a snoop around because we're boring. And then we're off to my mum's, so I'm going to update you one more time on the books I'm reading and I'll probably sign off the vlog here because it looks like it's looking so long right now. Um, so I'll start a new one tomorrow. Good morning lads, I'm off to treatment this morning. I thought I'd show you, I've got such a cute little toweling twin set like on eBay. It's actually animal stories. And my mum's handbag because, or one of her handbags, because we're going to a picnic with some friends after treatment. Go to the bus stop, it's gonna be like 30 degrees in England today, so put on your SPF lads. I'll catch up with some books when I'm at the picnic. Um. Not going in the vlog. <laughs> hey guys, just came back from a lovely day out. Um, had treatment this morning and then I've got hospital, like longer hospital tomorrow, but um, had a picnic with my friends and so nice. I just wanted to round off the vlog here and tell you about the books I read today. I haven't finished them, but I'll probably finish them before I start a new vlog, isn't it? So. Pop Song by Larissa Pham. Um, I just read a really good essay in here about film cameras and like the act of taking film photography which is something I'm really interested in it's something I do as a hobby I think this is definitely a book for people who like art like it's a lot about art and contemporary artists um so if that's not your thing then I wouldn't I feel like a lot of the paintings and things that she's referencing might be like only of interest to people who have a knowledge of contemporary art at present like Jenny Savile and people like that who maybe aren't like super super well known to people who aren't interested in art don't know i'm really enjoying it so far it's very like relaxed and it's a lot of addressing the reader or addressing her partner like remember when i took those photos of you which i really like feels really intimate so yeah we'll have more to say on that in my wrap up and then what it feels like for a girl by paris lee so i think i'm way further into this now and it feels very much like a stylized memoir i would describe it as so you're very much in the head of byron as they are growing up and right now they're 
getting into drugs and being paid for sex work with older men while they are under the age of 18 and it doesn't it lacks that reflection a memoir does but I think that's to its credit I would say I think the the present and the here and now of it is what makes it so like evocative to read you're really in the time of like the early noughties um there's a lot of very specific cultural references to the LGBTQ plus scene at the time which I think are really interesting um and it's really explaining a you know part of social history I would say that's now like I know I feel like if you came of age in the noughties you're like oh that wasn't that long ago but like that was literally 20 years ago so you would consider that recent history I guess now um but I'm really really enjoying it um the dialect you need to get a handle on I'm not sure I'd be interested in from international readers if you choose to read this um but I think Paris Eats has done a brilliant job and it's definitely a unique um genre bending as they say take on memoir or a retelling of past lives so yeah that's all of my reading updates i'll see you guys in another vlog